guys this is how this corset with a keyhole neckline is going to be now it's an inbuilt corset so this is what an inbuilt corset looks like can you see how it is so it gives you that easy snatching on the waist and on the tummy so this is it on the mannequin after i finish making it so you're just going to zip it up like this so guys this is what we'll be learning how to make today so if this tutorial is what interests you let's get started guys kindly watch to the end so we're going to start by marking half inch that serves as the starting line then i went ahead to roll it after that now we will we need to start putting all our vertical measurements that is the length so for the breast point is 10 the underbust is 13 inches the waist is 16 so i went ahead to rule the line now from the waist length i went down by 8 inches that's half as the hip length and this is me writing all the bodies so on the shoulder point the shoulder is 16 divided by 2 we have 8 i added half inch that is eight and a half now i'm using standard measurement of 3 by 3 for the neck width and the neck depth later we are going to you know or treat it now from the shoulder point i went down by one inch that will serve as the shoulder slope then i roll it from the neck depth to the shoulder slope so whatever i have left between the neck depth and the shoulder measurement divided by two to get the midpoint so guys for this tutorial i'm using a bust that of four inches that is the nipple to nipple eight divided by two we have four then i mark all the way from the breast point to the hip length so for the dart intake i'm taking one inch on both sides on the waist and on the under bust then i'm just going to connect from the under bust to the breast point with my curve ruler now for the center front i did not make it too curvy you can see the way i place my curve ruler it's not as curvy as the one going to the side Then I went ahead to connect it with a straight line to the waist length. So guys, I'm going to be going up from the breast point by one inch, and I'm also going to put the nipple to nipple measurement on that one inch. Then from that point, guys, I'm going to connect it to the middle of our shoulder. Then for our shoulder dart intake, I'm using 1.25 on both sides because this is a bust of 38. So anything from 40 upward, you use one and a half inches on both sides. Then you're going to connect to the one inch. After that, guys, I'm going to go ahead to close it so i can mark my shoulder measurements again because by the time you take off that that your shoulder measurements will get short so you're just going to place your ruler and you're going to connect it then before you open back your darts you have to now take your shoulder measurement of eight plus half inch sewing allowance because this tutorial is going to have a sleeve now from that point guys i'm going to go down by seven and a half inches that is the round sleeve of my client so your bicep divided by two that is what you do so i'm just making sure i mark the same thing so i can get a straight line then that now becomes the chest line for this tutorial so always make sure you take your round sleeve measurement and your across chest measurement 
So for the across chest measurement, the seven and a half inches, I divided it by three. Then I went up from the chest line by what I got and I indicate. So the seven and a half inch used for your chest line, whatever your chest line gives you, divide it by three. That serves as your across chest. Now the across chest measurement for this client is seven. That's 14 divided by two. Then replace the dart intake. Here you see my tip touching. You replace it back. Then because we added half inch to the shoulder measurement, you're going to add it also to the across chest. Now on the chest line, you're going to put your round bust measurement. So for this client, a round bust is 38. So divide by four is nine and a half. Now on the chest measurement doesn't need the half inch sewing so allowance. It's just the across chest and the shoulder. So I went ahead to put the same measurement on the breast point. So for the under bust, whatever your under bust gives you, you put it there, replace the two inches that intake. Then the same thing, you repeat the same thing for the waist, you repeat the two inches that intake. Now on the hip, so I put the hip measurements and I'm going to connect all the lines together. Then before I connect, I just went ahead to add sewing allowance of two, two inches. Then this is me connecting. Now you can see the shape is looking funny because of the dark. Everything will be okay when you when you finish sewing. Then you connect from the waist to the hip length. Let everything go and meet your your dart line. So guys, for this tutorial, where I want the opening to get to like the chest, I'm using the across chest measurement line now another way you can do that is for you to go up from your breast point by four inches if you want it to close very well so guys i'm going to be marking half half inch on both sides yeah that is how i'm going to tighten that over bust then i'm going to connect it to the breast point now because this is going to be having a sleeve I am tightening it by half half inch. If it were to be a tube, I'm going to tighten with one one inch. And I'm connecting it to the breast point. Then from the breast point, I went up by one and a half inches. You can go up by two. It depends on how you want your neck depth to be. Then I mark half inch there. That will serve as the breast apart. That is, you know, when you're making a corset, that middle line. Yeah, so I connected the half inch like that. Then from that half inch, I'm going to connect it to the overbust tightening. Now I'm using a pencil because in case I might decide to change whatever I do, so I can clean it instead of the marker. Now, guys, another thing is I'm going to measure from that point to that because I just want to make sure the two the two are the same. So you also measure from this other side to the other. So whatever it gives you. You are going to indicate it so the first one give me seven point something now the second one i have to make sure it's the same thing with the first one then you take your curve ruler and you're just going to connect it into your armhole now another way again is you can decide to close it from the breast point connect one dart onto the other close one dart onto the other so you can make you, you know you get the you know a proper curve for your neck then you take your curve ruler and you're just going to blend it into the armhole now you can see where i blend it to yeah because it's going to have a sleeve so that is where i want the yoke for the upper part to get to Now I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to connect from the half inch into the underbust just the way you see 
my ruler just follow my step now to connect the other cup side from the chest line after the seam allowance yeah so from the actual measurements i went in by one and a half inch then i'm going to connect it to the under bust that is the second cup for our corset now this is how it is looking like so i think i am satisfied with what i got i'm just going to be using my marker to thicken it so guys if you find this tutorial helpful kindly give me a like let's continue now <clears throat> like i said initially i'm going to alterate the neckline so i'm using three and a half by three and a half now instead of the initial three by three then i went ahead to connect it then guys for our keyhole i mark one and a half inch from the neck depth then i'm going to connect it into the second dart into the second cup i hope you understand yeah so that's as our, our keyhole so guys before we cut let's go to the back then we'll come back to the front now i like having my paper my front and back on the same paper yeah so i'm going to connect the hip length the waist length the chest line those three measurements are connect then because whatever you use for your round sleeve you are going to use it also for the back so from the chest line you are going to go up by whatever your round sleeve gave you so since mine gave me seven and a half i went up by seven and a half then i use one inch for the shoulder slope initially yeah so i'm also going to be marking that one inch for the shoulder slope then i'm going to connect the line So for our neck depth, I use three and a half for the front. But before that, I'm going to be marking zip allowance of one inch. This is for those that want to use zip instead of a lacing at the back. So I'm just doing this for those of you that might want to use a zip. So you mark your zip allowance first. Then from the zip allowance, you're going to mark the neck width. You know I use three and a half for the front so for the back i'm using one inch for the back neck depth so for our shoulder you're going to place your tape from that upper part into the shoulder slope like that you're going to place your tape like that and i went ahead to mark it an half inch yes. then i connected it from the neck width to the eight and a half so the across chest measurements is the same thing for the front so i went ahead to mark it another way is just for you to just connect just the way you did your hip your waist and your chest line then for the across chest i put the across chest measurements plus the half inch for allowance then on the chest line i repeat the round bust measurements and i'm going to connect the three points together so after connecting i did a little bit of mistake there so i had to connect it properly i hope you all understand now the reason why i'm been doing a shoulder that tutorial back to back is for you guys to just understand so for our darts 
I use 4 inches for the front that I'm going to add 0 0.25 and I'm using 4 and half 4.25 rather so I place it on the chest line on the waist length and on the hip length then I'm going to connect now this shoulder that is very easy guys if you understand this pattern you might not want to go back to any other pattern anymore so for the darts i'm using 0.75 from both sides you can use half a inch on both sides it depends on you both are okay then i went ahead to connect it to the corresponding darts measurement so for this chest line i went down by two inches and i connected it then for the waist measurements i repeat the waist plus the dart intake and plus our sewing allowance of two inches i did the same thing for the hip length Then on the chest line, I added two inches for sewing allowance. And I went ahead to connect the three lines together. Now my paper is not enough for that point, you can see. So I just decided to use a ruler instead of hip curve. It doesn't matter. Since it's not um, a dress, like, how will I put it? It's not like... A straight dress rather so for those that want to put a zip I mark 0.75 on the waist and you are going to connect it to the nape of your back neck just the way you see me doing like that this is very important so as to avoid any zip bulge then for the lacing guys I'm using one and a half from where you see my tip touching i'm going to be using one and a half now before we connect the lacing let's get the length of the upper part so from the center front i went down by six inches on the side seam i went down by three and a half inches now before i connect i'm going to be marking my two inches sewing allowance I will indicate like that then I'm going to connect it from that point to that point yeah then after that for the back as well it has to be the same thing on the side seam so i still mark my two inches seam allowance because i don't want my curving to get to that part if we get to the end it's going to get short now on this back center back i went down by two and a half inches now for some of my tutorials the same six inches i use for the front i'll use for the center back but for this, I use two and a half. It is optional. If your clients have big tummy, you can do the same thing you did for the front. But if they don't have big tummy, for the back, just do two and a half or three inches. Then I mark one one and a half inches for my lacing. So that part is totally off. I hope you guys understand. So for clients that have big tummy, please do the same thing you did for the back. So they can snatch the back very well. Then this is me just writing what I took off. So guys, um, from the chest line, whatever you went up for, whatever it gives you that mark, you also mark it on the back chest line because everything has to be the same. Now I went down by one inch from the chest line on the center front because I wanted to have a little bit of slant. Then I connected it that way. Then from the shoulder, 
I just took it up. So that becomes the back yoke. Then this is me slashing the paper because I want to cut it. Now on this piece heat front, we are going to be tightening it a little. So you tighten the 0 0.25 on both sides. Then you connect it to the corresponding dots. Connect it to the waist dot. Then I'm going to be closing it so I can tighten it. So when you close it, your line gets shorter. Then you take your ruler and you blend it properly. Then after that, I'm going to be cutting. Then I went ahead to slit the paper. Then I'm cutting the front now. Since we are done with the back. So just watch how I cut. You have to remove all your darts. Then this is me still trying to close the front. So that I can get... A smooth upper part so guys this tutorial is going to be part one and part two yeah because it is very long like the drafting part but the sewing is not too long so watch out for the part two of this tutorial so let's continue because we still have a lot to do, especially on the yoke part. So for this yoke, guys, you can't just cut it off like that. Remember the half, half inch for tightening. That is the line here where you see me touching. Now you're going to take your ruler from that tightening. I are going to blend it into your shoulder that can you see what I'm doing you are going to blend it into your shoulder that so when you blend it up it gives you something like this I'm just trying to thicken it up so can you see it's now you are going to close from one that now to the other if you don't do this your yoke will be bigger i've made a mistake like that in the past before i understand this so you're going to close it with your tape now i'm just reducing that one and a half to 1.25 if you want your yoke to be big you can do two inches one and a half or whatever then i'm blending it to the dart, the second dart, I hope you get that dart you close. You are going to blend it to it like that. Yeah, so the yoke is ready. Now this is me cutting the neck, the neckline. So this way, your yoke will be perfect. There will not be any gaping at all. This is not mine. I normally use my tutorials like my clients. Whenever I'm sewing for my clients, I make tutorials for, you know, some of them for the sewing. So I cannot teach you guys a bad thing. Never. So guys, I'm also going to be closing the back that so I can trace it properly. Then I'm going to be cutting the back, the down parts. Another thing again is for those of you that are using a zip, tighten it up by 0 0.25. That is the upper part like that. And connect it to the waist, to the corresponding that. 
Now, I am using a lacy, but I'm still tightening it up because I want everything to be perfect. So, I am going to cut, 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 cut. So, this is me cutting off. Yep. So, that's our back yoke and I'm cutting off the dart for the back. I'm removing it now. I'm just going to use my arrow to indicate that that is the upper part. And I'm also going to indicate that is the lacing. Then, where I'm going to be joining to, you use your, your marker to indicate. So, center front, center front, side front, side front, front yoke. Label your pattern. It is very important to... <laughs> So this is it guys. I'll see you all in the next tutorial. Bye.